Hello Linux lovers, my name's Wimpy, welcome to my world, <laughs> there we go, who was that, Yannick? <laughs> Hello and good morning indeed, how's everyone doing? Did everyone have a good week? Good weekend? Just realised I forgot to turn my lights on, let's do that, let's do that one, there we go. Uh, it's always something, isn't there? Streaming business is more time consuming than you realise. Right then, um, yeah, how did everyone get on this weekend? I had fun, I played loads of computer games with my daughter, well, with my daughter and on my own. Tinkered around with the uh, the gaming PC. I'm totally loving Chimera OS. I think it's almost perfect for playing games with Linux. Almost perfect. Um, anyway, today uh, we're going to be going back to Machine Spawn, which we had a little prototype with uh, last Wednesday, I think. Anyway, we're going to be returning to that and taking that prototype concept and starting to turn it into a more useful general purpose tool. Good morning, Paul. I am glad you are here. So I saw, um, uh, who was it? Was it pa Padza? Yeah, Padza was saying about thanks for the recommendation for um, Yorkshire Gold Tea. Um, on the last stream, we had a bit of a tea chat at the end there. And um, I asked Paul if um, Paul is something of a tea connoisseur. Um, and uh, I asked Paul if they would um, sort of give some recommendations for teas. So I thought we'd start with the continuation of that conversation very quickly. So this is uh, Paul's blog. And this is uh, the article that he wrote up uh, of some of his favorite teas. So I've just put that um, just put that in the chat. And I thought the other thing we could do is seeing as the hello nubbin, good morning, how you doing? Uh, and Addy, Ad user, how you doing? Um, and Yannick's also talking about OBS. So I've got a little bit of OBS news as well. But I thought we'd start by, let's take this here and have a little look at cruise control again. So cruise control uh, can do many things, can integrate chat and Twitch and OBS. Uh, and I'm using it for some of the chatbot. Well, mostly for chatbots and chat timers. Um, I'm using Atom for everything else. But I thought uh, what would be good is if uh, we add a new um, a new command to our chatbot. So let's think about this. It's not scripts, it's studio. Studio, Wimpy's World, where do I keep this stuff? Cruise control, cruise control, no. Cruise control with a lowercase k. No, there we go, cruise with it, there we go, that's it. And then triggers and chat commands. There we go. So here's my chat commands thing. So we've got a couple of uh, fun ones in here. Um, so let's take this one as a template. So we'll add a new chat command that everyone can trigger at least uh, once every two minutes. We'll give it the commands uh, T and Cuppa. And then we'll say um, something like our our t our communities t expert um, at. I wonder if that will work if I do it like this. Um, we'll, M N I that's your oh, N I right recommends these excellent teas. So we'll put our teapot emoji in there, and then well, uh, I need to go and get the blog page. Here it is. Copy that, stick that in here, 
So I think that should do it. <laughs> you think Monica? Okay, well we can we can expand on this concept, but I just wanted to sort of demonstrate how uh, this works. So I'm now going to uh, reload this, and I wonder if it works. I wonder if I do bang T. Nope, got that wrong. What did I get wrong there? Uh, all of it apparently. What have I what have I missed? On command. Oh bother! <laughs> Why didn't that work? Yeah, I've I I just did that, Yannick. Um, but I don't. I think at least I think I did. Let's try again now. There we go. <laughs> I think I mistyped KC reset, Yannick. Oh, I did. I I did the wrong command entirely. There we go. There we go. I did KC. Indeed, I did. Thank you, Yannick. Right, there we go. So we've just very quickly added a new uh, chat command there. So when anyone comes in here uh, uh, requesting T, we can we can build this out. Uh, I could I could add something along the lines. Um, uh, I'll I'll expand on this later, but there we go. Just a quick example. I know Yannick Yannick was in our Discord over the weekend. You've moved. Yeah, you were doing what I did a couple of weeks ago, sort of eradicating stream elements from your stream configuration. So um, yeah, it's very good for that. Um, and it can do a whole lot more besides. And Yannick's gone a bit further because I'm using this. So Deck API Me is a open source API middleware that gives you really easy access to endpoints for popular APIs. It's really geared towards Twitch. So I use this to get um, API information out of Twitch to easily embed in chat commands. So we can do this one here. I can do uh, bang subs. Let's see how many subs have we got. 18 subscribers. Thank, thank you to each of you. So there we go. There's a, a little, little look at uh, cruise control again. And if you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, I, I think I did do Casey earlier, which, uh, which pumped the URL in here, didn't it? Yeah. Thank you for subscribing, Proton Beam. Hello, hello, good morning. Thank you for the uh, <laughs> thank you for the sub. That's very kind. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't a call to action for people to subscribe. I was I was just tinkering, but thank you. That's very kind. Right, okay. So that's that's a little another little look at cruise control. Um, I feel like there's going to be some more stuff to do with that in the future. Right then. Um, yeah, so Yannick's saying that you know he's he's gone down the no third party services in his stream configuration and was at, able to achieve a lot of that through um, cruise control. Um, I've seen some interesting examples on cruise control's site, or rather in their Discord, Yannick. I think I mentioned it to you at the weekend that they have some an examples um, channel. And some of the examples are a bit like what you did with your shout out command where it actually goes and uh, picks up the authentication tokens directly from the Twitch API so that you can access things like detecting uh, incoming raids and I, I forget which it is that there's a few there's a few events that cruise control doesn't support out of the box but there are examples of hooking into the Twitch API um in order to get access to these additional facilities oh i think it was running adverts was one of them because that's one of the things i use atom for at the moment at the beginning at the very beginning i bring the stream up and then immediately tell it to run 90 seconds of adverts <clears throat> which then suppresses people new people coming to the channel seeing adverts for like 35 minutes or something um, yeah, so there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do with uh, cruise control. Right, anyway, machine spawn. Um, I think I figured out what machine spawn is or going to be. Uh, and I think that the, the TLDR is it's um, 
a, ra a wrapper for managing system D containers. I think that's kind of the scope of this at the moment. And when we were playing with this last week, it was sort of going okay. I had some unanswered questions, but then it all fell apart as we started to uncover features of um, machine control, uh, which is part of system D. I ran into a bug where I was trying to use this pool tar and well I thought I was being dim because it wasn't working <laughs> turns out actual legitimate bug uh, in system D 249 apparently so um, that's a problem because although this is fixed in what will become Ubuntu 22.10 on Thursday this week hopefully um, it's not fixed in 2204 yet although should be at some point soon but Takov uh, was in our discord over the weekend or just after that stream and for those of you that don't know we've got discord is available there um, and in the Nix uh, bug tracker they sort of said yeah, you can work around this by W getting the tarball of the distro file system and then importing it. So what I'm going to do is build out using the bootstrapping technique, because uh, I think I want to keep that capability. We will add a the ability to pull from a file system tarball and we'll do we'll try i don't know if this is going to be possible yet but we'll find out try and do a little a very simple bit of introspection on the version of system d that's currently running and if it's 249 automatically fall back to this mechanism and in any other case do this and hopefully that will mean we can have sort of a a robust way of you know uh pulling in file system tarballs using machine spawn which is this wrapper i've still got some unanswered questions about how machine spawn is going to manage some facilities of these machines but i'm just gonna overlook that for the moment so let's go and look at this i can't remember exactly where we left this i think i only made one minor change post stream which is i created this variable for the archive because it was referenced here here and here so i just turned it into a variable so you know it, there's no sort of magic strings knocking around um so we had this container bootstrap here so I think we will have at some point, we'll put a stub function in, we'll have a function for container um, pull tar, which is what we'll use as our sort of wrapper uh, to either do the machine control pull tar, so it will actually do machine control pull tar, um, probably a URL um, or something. Um, what does what does machine? What did that issue say? Altar URL. So I think yes. When you do this, it derives the name of the machine from the tarball that's pulling. So it'll be something like that. We could actually just build this out, couldn't we? There we go. But we'll we'll actually uh, put some guards around this um, and do the whole W get thing. So I wonder if we do system. Hang on, let's do. Okay, let's do. Oh, that's going to be easy enough then, isn't it? Here, here's where we can get our version from. Um, so we'll do cutting on uh, spaces and we'll get 
well, we could do this with Orc, couldn't we? Um, um, is that going to... What have I got wrong there? Oh, yeah. There we go. There's our, there's our version number there, so we could do this in the script up here somewhere. Uh, we can call this, this is never going to change, this is machine couple version. We'll just grab that like so, and then in here we can do a case. Probably going to need the URL regardless, so we can do case. Um, this is me coming home to, or coming to this office. Well, then what did that tell us? Look at this. <laughs> that was GitHub Copilot. This isn't exactly what I want, but it's close enough. I can just change that to 249 and I might, I might actually, I'm not going to, I might just do this for the time being actually, just for the lols, because um, technically we know it's got bugs and then for anything else we'll do that. So what's this name? Can you pass a name to Bolter? Let's just have a look. I, I can't remember what we discovered. So let's do machine control help. And oh. oh, we can give it a name. Okay, great. Okay, well that that is how I want it to work, so that's fine. Uh, I've lost my bit. Oh yeah, because I've used this as a term. Right. Okay, so that will be just fine, and we'll get rid of that, and we'll get rid of that. So there we go. Not uh, not complete, but you know it's a start up a ten, right? So there's our pull tar implementation, and what we'll do is we'll we'll do some w get shenanigans in there. So good morning, good morning. I see um, uh, root root three over two. Hello, thanks for stopping by. Hello, <laughs> hello, King Egypt. Yeah, it's always too early for orc. I can remember when I was at university. I, I can remember some of it. It was a long time ago. Um, I remember doing a whole syllabus on learning how to use said and orc and being absolutely bamboozled by it <laughs> on, on, uh, on our first introduction. But yeah, that was actually, uh, actually a course, said an orc. We had to, we had to write some sort of rudimentary language lexical analyzer or something it was it was hideous um which is why uh, you may have noticed i'm so scarred by that experience you you will notice that my default tendency is to use cut uh when i'm slicing and dicing strings with bash um because i always have to think too hard when uh when I start using um, <laughs> said and all. Right then. Uh, okay, so root over three has a question. Root three over two has a question. Says, what's the TLDR for machine couple? I've never heard of it. Uh, so machine couple is uh, one of the uh, tools that's part of the system D suite and it enables you to manage um, containers and virtual machines via systemd. That's the TLDR. Um, what I'm doing is creating a wrapper to sit around it specifically to stand up and operate containers. So I want to be able to create a clean container as a build environment run jobs inside it and extract the artifacts. I want to be able to do that locally so I can iterate fast 
and what I've just started doing, thanks to the contributions of some of the people in the community here, specifically Danny, who I don't think is with us this morning, um, is then using those that same tooling in CICD so I can have the same workflow locally as I do in my CICD. I work with Docker a lot for work um, and I'm specifically not using Docker. I want to learn and experiment with something else, which is why I'm doing it this way. So a little bit longer than TLDR, but Machine Cuttle manages VMs and containers. Uh, why not dock up just just to get familiar with something else so i i know lex um, d very well i know docker well um, i have used system d containers uh, for many years for doing like foreign foreign architecture builds on x86 workstations and it's proven to be a very robust workflow and i just want to do it more <laughs> so I'm taking a, a tool that I, I've started to notice it's a pattern I'm using in my development so I'm just trying to turn it into a, a general purpose tool that I can easily reuse in the projects where I want a builder hey Ross how you doing <laughs> good good to see you um yes i agree uh ross says that uh, they feel that lex d is severely underrated it is lex d is amazing um, thank you for the follow mighty and one i'm not making a lex d replacement here um it's very specifically not that <laughs> a lex d is an extremely comprehensive tool if you've not used it it's definitely worth a look but what i do want to do is get this to the place where uh, I can use it not just for building stuff, but I want to do like um, fully uh, PID1 initialized containers that can be in air quotes booted and I can test definitely graphical applications and if it goes well, whole desktop environments because obviously that's a thing I care about. Hey Danny, good to see you. Thanks, um, thanks for your help over the weekend. May I um between the two of us we may <laughs> we made one good developer there. We've we've uh, aced most of it. I've got a problem with the YouTube services, but that has been a persistent issue I've bounced off for years. And at some point I've fixed it because I've got a build in my archive of builds that works. So I'm gonna have to go back and do some dissecting. But the Twitch and Restream stuff's working. The actual process is working. The the secrets are getting to the right place. But um, those back ticks in the keys is um, killer. It's a nightmare. Anyway, thank you for your help. And thank you, Danny, because one of the reasons I'm tinkering with this is because Danny piqued my interest in, in developing this idea further. <laughs> you're in so danny danny lives in the same town as me so we i could probably lean out the window and shout hello to you death <laughs> i imagine you're just that way <laughs> hang on yeah that way <laughs> that's that's town the town is that way <laughs> right okay so i'm just going to flesh out some things here so we've got that we're going to use this bootstrapping technique so if I was to do this, we could add here. Um, let's do that and then do And we'll need to pass hmm well we don't have enough parameters being pulled in here do we we're gonna have to think about how we how we do this do we keep compatibility with or consistency with how machine control expects the arguments to be handed, the order in which it expects arguments to be handed to it, 
or do we not do that? <laughs> um, oh, okay, so what's Yannick got to say here? So Yannick says, once machine spawn works, I think I'll embed, embed it in a Flutter plugin. So I can build my, ah, right, I can build my Flutter apps in a system D container right for my own project. Yes, this is, that's an excellent use case and exactly the sort of thing I'm going for. I mean, the these OBS portable builds really highlighted the power of this because Danny's GitHub workflow is remarkably, um, I'm, I was going to say simple. It, it, it. It is. It's remarkably simple, given that it builds three version, four, now four versions of OBS on three different Ubuntu releases. And it's able to do that because it only needs to stand up one Ubuntu in the actual runner, you know, the CI CD runner, because we're doing all of this stuff with this container management, which actually provides, you know, a back catalog of Ubuntu releases to build on. And that's one of the reasons why I want to keep this bootstrap option because I feel that's a really powerful way to grab, go back to the past and get older uh, Ubuntu's. So we're going to have to think about this. So this is going to need to be expanded because I'd like to update this one today to maybe support Debian and Ubuntu. And this one needs to support the idea of passing a URL and providing a name and this one should probably do the same thing in that it should be named but huh it's complicated isn't it because this is where we're running into the, so what I'm doing is I'm just padding this out to get an idea so this would be distro so this that would be the equivalent of like Debian or Ubuntu and then name is really like release so here we would say container bootstrap Ubuntu jammy for example but we still really need to give it a name so maybe what we need to do is break this up like so so we have one parameter. So the second parameter is always going to be the name, just as it is in uh, machine control. And then container remove probably needs a name, a name as well. We're getting name there. Okay. So we're we don't need to pass these because we've got them in the global scope. They were more comfortable passing them, I think. So we'll have to update all of those. So we've got the idea that this will be a bootstrap will be a hyphenated thing. The name we probably need to double quote because we just can't be sure what the heck somebody's going to type in there. And a URL is going to be for pulling the tarball. And we know that the removing, oops, we know the removing thing works. So, uh, and then we've got container run. What the heck is this? Oh, I see. So I probably need to change this slightly. To make that consistent but let's go and update these ones to start with <laughs> right then yeah oh actually whilst uh, so danny danny says yeah actually spins up each build from the matrix in a separate vm it does um but what we're able to control what you what you have is just use ubuntu latest as the vm for every build, but it's then the system D um, the system D N spawn tooling that we have, which actually dictates bootstrapping a particular version of Ubuntu in a container inside that VM that we then do the build on, um, which means that you don't have to have a, 
a more complex uh, matrice of Ubuntu versions in the build YAML. You move all of that into the tooling in inside the thing. Um, and I, <laughs> I, I didn't think that through because I was building, I was making that as a local build tool. Um, so I didn't think through the benefits of that. But when I saw how you'd adapted it in uh, for GitHub Actions, I was like, oh yeah, this has got this has got some legs because you know, other than the complex, I mean, if you think of a simpler project, because obviously OBS is quite a complex a bit of code. If you think of something like um, uh, Go is a bad example. There's some C code, some C code that may have library dependencies. Um, it's uh, sort of ABI considerations, let's say, for the versions of libraries it's built with. It would be really nice to just be able to have that matrix of build it on, you know, Xenial, Bionic, Focal, Jammy, and you just abstract all of that away from the, the build tooling. Yeah. Right then, so uh, without further ado, let's get into this. So how am I going to do this? I think the action is the first parameter which governs this. Then the second one has, is the name. So that's going to have to become the third parameter. Okay. Hmm, let's think. Technically, the name should be optional. So we'll have to we'll have to give this some thought. Um, and here, of course, when we remove a container, the name is the only parameter. So actually, I don't think we can do this here. I think think we need to just get the action as the first parameter and then we probably need to deal with the subsequent parameters within each of these. So we could do this. We know that we're going to need to pass the name along which is going to be parameter 3 and this is going to be parameter 1 and we could have a simple chat I'm just thinking about how to validate that the inputs are legit so um, and we probably need a couple of like simple helpers to validate the input but that's maybe over engineering at this early stage so let's think we want um, so we don't need to specify a name Whoop. so that could be three and this is going to be so let's just make it rigid for the moment and we'll just say um, there we go that's kind of what we need if if we don't have if uh, that's empty or let's be let's be very prescriptive for the time being we must specify a um, distro release and container name. There we go. Else uh, we'll do that. There we go. That's the bootstrapping one. So we'll just concentrate on the bootstrap for the moment and get that one fleshed out. So if we save that and go up here to bootstrap we are going to need uh, an archive so that's going to need to change um
uh, what did we think? We, we wanted name equals, it's not going to be one, it's going to be two as it happens. Uh, container, it's not going to be container name. What's this? This is going to be, effectively it's going to be distro, isn't it? Because that's going to be our thing. So we can do a simple check here what's distro release so that there so let's think it's distro hmm. distro full and then we're going to end up with distro release and distro hmm. distro name is misleading but it'll have to do so this is going to be um, let's do It's a good suggestion. Oh, hey, Esme, how you doing? Right then, let's have a little look here. What have we got here? So Danny's got some news. What's new with Danny? Uh, submit a job application to Hawkeye. Oh, who are they? I've not heard of them, Danny. Based on the other side of town. Oh, right, web dev. Okay, cool. Uh, well, that, that will suit you down to the ground. You've got a long history in that. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I hope that works out for you, Danny. Um, nice. Yeah, I'm doing just fine. Just fine. Uh, what did I do this with recently? Um, it was get destroy first. There we go, that all probably I don't want to do it with orc. Oh well, I'll do it this I'll do it my way. So distro name we'll do echo distro ball we'll cut this on a hyphen take the first one and then that is going to be the second part and we'll put this inside a case um, distro pull yeah So we could do something like Ubuntu. Let's just do two for the time being. Ubuntu Jammy. And anything else we'll consider um, an error. There we go. That's super simples. Sports analysis. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, they do the cameras at Wimbledon, right? Is that what, is that, am I getting that right? I think they have the high speed cameras that um, uh, they can go to so many times per game, per, per match at Wimbledon to determine whether the ball was on the line or over the line and all the rest of it. I think that's the same outfit, is it? Right then, so what was this repo for? Uh, okay, so that just defines that. So archive, uh, we can set the archive here. 
because if we start doing Debian, um, we can switch that archive path up a bit. Yes, it is. It is. It is the high-speed camera people. Proton beamed. Hello there. <laughs> Yeah, such is such as being an arbiter on high pressure sports. <laughs> Proton beamed. Yeah, you bound to cop it. Mind you, better that a uh, a robot with a camera eye gets it than you know it was like in the seventies when McEnroe used to uh, get his pants in a knot with the officials. Right, um, how are we doing here? Distro release. So. This is where we now need to pull the name here. So this is where we're saying bootstrap and distro release. Okay, so let's actually make this distro full because this should always be the same. So what we were doing was a little bit of pre-caching here and there's no reason why we can't install both key rings regardless and this is what's distro release distro release was what this was the uh the equivalent it's the same it's still this oh in fact that's wrong that should be two Okay, let's think about this. That's going to be the right thing. And it's the repo that will drive whether it's Ubuntu or not. So that's fine for the moment. We haven't got Debian support yet, but we can be mindful of it. Name, we're still grabbing, aren't we? Yes. And fine so we can put wrappers in place there and then what we do at the end here is we import use machine control to import the directory that we've created we've bootstrapped an OS in a directory and we're importing that with a name so that should work so let's just see if we can stand up a uh, um, machine spawn and what are we going to do we're going to bootstrap Ubuntu focal this should tell me I've got an error oh I've got many errors <laughs> 137 what have I done there oops Let's have a look. So uh, it's down here. What did we do? Uh, I've got an if. I'm not. Oh, there it is. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> So this should uh, uh, this should now give me a legitimate error, <laughs> which is you must specify the release and the container name, and we're going to call this, well we're going to call it Bob, aren't we, Bob? <laughs> so <clears throat> let's see how this goes. <clears throat> so we should have two things at the end of this. We should have a cached version of this uh, release, which we can do better things with in the future. Because if we keep the bootstrapped file system around when we stand up one next time we can just directly import from the one we have and if we want to be really fancy we can import from the one we've already got and then step inside that container and do an apt get update apt get upgrade so that it's all up to date <clears throat> that's that's one idea at least <laughs> Yes, actually, Danny, we should, um, next time you're in town, let me know. I mean, you could either come here or I could meet you in the centre of town. We could have a coffee or whatever. 
or if it's early evening, go to uh, the cocktail bar for happy hour. <laughs> <clears throat> So I'm not at home at the moment. I'm I'm in I'm in town. My office is in 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 the town centre. I'm not far from the station. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're not that far anyway, are we? I mean, when Danny and I go to pro, oh, what have we got here? Oh, something's gone wrong. <clears throat> Saving as Bob. Note something something. Well, that seems. Am I? I don't think I'm reading that's an error. Okay. So if we now look in bar lib machines, oh, I'll have to do that as root. There is in there is Bob. And um if we look in bar cash bootstrap, there is Ubuntu Focal. So this is good. So we're probably going to need to add some placeholders. <laughs> yeah, Bob's back, Yannick. I'm just going to go with it. I'm just going to go with it. So um, we're going to need to do this. So for container remove, uh, we probably need a clean cache at some point. So we'll do a container clean cache because some people might not want things sticking around for ages so we'll do that so these are just stubs at the moment so we'll put a clean cache in here where was delete because that was fairly small wasn't it there we go in fact we could, we could write this one up couldn't we this one's, this one's easy Clean cache and name, and we can just say if uh, no local no no we don't even need to do that do we oh yeah we can, we can do name equals that and then we can say if there is a directory oh that was it. There it is. It's done exactly. <laughs> Copilot to the rescue. There we go. That is exactly what I wanted to do. Is the directory there? In which case, remove it. That is exactly what we wanted. So there's our clean cache function. Uh, why is that? Oh, yeah. Okay. We probably need to do better there, don't we? Yes. Okay, let come back to that. So... What else are we going to want to do with this thing? Um, we now, now need to make sure that... Well, should we try and get Debian working with this? Yeah, so... Hey Paddy, welcome back. Um, Copilot is just getting better. I don't know... I, I imagine it's because there must be more people using it because it's now, you know, available. But um, even when it's wrong, it it's close enough to the structure of the code that I want. I mean, I did it earlier. I'll just accept it and then just edit the bits because it's a bunch of characters. I don't have to rattle off the end of my fingertips. Um, so even when it's not 100% accurate, I often accept it and then just make some small edits and it just saves me time. Um, just, you know, the time it takes to enter characters. So I really like it. And sometimes it comes up with some really novel solutions to things and it's like, oh, that's kind of good. And you'll notice I've been doing this sort of thing. You know, you put a comment in and you'll say, you know, calculate I, you know, um, and there we go. Oh, no, that's oh, going to disappoint me now, isn't it? Well, uh, what was it? Um, calculate, calcu, calculate percentage 
difference. I'm just making up something. There we go. So this is an example where you can just put in a comment, hit return, and then it will provide a potential solution for you. And that's actually quite close, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure that's, I think that's correct. But there you go, you get the idea. So sometimes, so I've, I've stopped Googling, you know, Stack Overflow. I try that a couple of times before I go searching elsewhere and that just keeps you focused. So, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a thing, Yannick. I, I love it. I, I mean, it is freaky sometimes how good it is. I mean, I, I used it the other day for documentation. It's really great for that as well. So Paddy and I is asking how um, expensive is it? Um, I'm rather fortunate that because of my various open source contributions, um, it is free for me to use. Um, and we did discuss this on the Linux Downtime podcast, which um, here are the details. Um, and um, my assessment was this, is that because I've had the opportunity to use it now, even if I didn't get it for free, I would pay for it because it's that valuable to me. It that much of a time saver. Okay, um, so Danny, you're in town again this week. So I may not be, um, depend, let me know when you're going down. I am off on travels from Thursday. So I may not be around, <laughs> um, but always keep me informed of your movements and uh, we can uh, we can catch up on stuff. Yeah, Linux Downtime is an awesome podcast. It's the best Linux podcast. You should definitely listen to it. Um, and we had the benefit, of course, that Hayden is one of uh, our co-presenters. So whilst we were able to talk about the... And this was like day one or day two of having... Co maybe a week. It wasn't very long. It was very early days. Um, and there was a lot of murmuring in some corners of the community around the sort of the legality legal issues of co-pilot and what with hayden being a lawyer we uh, we're in a unique position that when we have these kinds of discussions we're 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 well equipped with developer chops and legal know know-how and skill uh, so we could we were able to bring it all together and hayden did a fantastic job of debunking just about all of the um, legal concerns surrounding it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. So if you haven't listened, go go to um, linuxdowntime.com uh, and you'll find that episode on uh, on Copilot. Uh, and let us know what you think. <clears throat> ah, so Linux Paul has moved on to audiobooks. Interesting. I don't listen to as many podcasts as I used to. Um, I watch an awful lot of streaming stuff now. So I, when I used to cook, I would like listen to podcasts. And these days I'm mostly uh, either watching some, some stuff on YouTube or, you know, watching whatever series I'm watching on whatever streaming service has got the thing I'm interested in. Uh, right, let's, let's make sure I'll check happy with this. So we'll now have a go at adapting this to, whoops, Debian, um, which is, they've all been B recently, haven't they? Uh, Debian releases, what have we got here? Stable is code name Bullseye, that's what we want. Bookworm's the next one, isn't it? Let's just do that for now. Oh, is that right? I tell you what, if it's got that right, I'll be mega impressed. Uh, so, archive. Uh, is that? Uh, and then this is going to be the Thank same. Thank you for the follow, Adcha underscore. Hello, Adcha. How you doing? 
Thanks for the um, follow. Welcome to the stream. So oh, I just realised I used um, an off off stream window. Oops. Off stream window for that. Maybe we can. We'll probably need to fold these two bits of code given that it's the same stuff. Right, what are we looking at here? Distro name, distro release. Okay, so that's all going to be the same. That's going to be the same. And then here, we're probably going to want to bootstrap this differently. So let's do this. Let's do deb. Oops, let's put a comment in. Because I can't remember off the top of my head what the um, components should be. So we'll do deb bootstrap debian bullseye. Hit return. Oh, I thought you were going to. I thought. What's that? What's that got here? Oh, that's fine. Um, oh well, so case, um, what's it going to be? It's going to be distro name. Why is that, why is that not connected? Because we're not using it yet, that's fine. Right, so distro name is going to be either Debian or Ubuntu, so case, uh, distro name. In and then this one can be Ubuntu, and we'll just yank that bit of code there. and we won't do any of that we will do the inclusions the release should be the same I wonder if I can get away without passing components in let's find out oh here we go there we go <laughs> close enough look, look there we go we've got uh, we've got that so we don't need that that or that So variant arc, yeah, these are things we're going to play with. So one of the reasons why I'm, so I just need to explain. One of the reasons why I'm keeping this bootstrapping feature around, even though we figured out we can pull in tarballs of file systems of distros, which will be handy if we want to stand up a Fedora or stand up an Arch Linux or whatever it might be. I specifically want this bootstrapping capability for this because I know that if we install um, QMU user static, we can say architecture is um, ARM64, and we can create ARM containers on an x86 host and operate on them. And that's a really valuable feature that I want to preserve because some of my projects, several of them in fact, are building ARM images on x86 so that's why this bootstrapping piece I'm not throwing out in favor of the pulling of tarballs I sometimes want to be able to um, curate a bootstrapped thing um, and this is sort of the first pass of that so systemd containers fine I wonder how much of this we really want I'm going to assume we don't want all of that we don't want this but the components was useful. Main contrib non free. They are the ones, aren't they? It all sounds familiar now. You can see it. Um, and we've got exclusions, which I don't think we need on Debian. So I wonder if that will be enough to stand up Debian. Ah, no. Here we go. This is this is also where we need to make a change. So we need another one of these. 
take that. Should probably use a here dock at some point, but we'll just go with this for now. Um, warning, it already exists. Uh, okay. So this is the Ubuntu one. Um, let's do that. But we can put you up here, can't we? So that should be fine. And then we want the equivalent of this for Debian. And that should look bit like main contrib non break I think. Do we need any of this other stuff? I haven't looked at a Debian app sources the default one in forever. That one's not gonna exist. Let's just let's just go with the absolute base and see how far see how far we go what do you reckon uh, what's wrong with that there's a quote missing okay mm, probably okay probably okay so I need an automatic config file writer. What's that, Esme? What What do you need this for? <laughs> okay, so I'm getting some TV recommendations here. So um, Paddy is making a recommendation for um, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Just recently been on all four. <laughs> Complete. <laughs> okay, I don't have pie hole. Um, right. Okay. Um, oh, and the Bake Off, obviously. <laughs> I have never watched that. I'm familiar, of course. Right, okay. What do we reckon? Let's try it. Let's try it. So, it's Debbie and Bullseye, right? Can't call it Bob, though. I have to call this one Fred. Deb Ian Bullseye Okay, well hang on, that's doing that. It's pulling stuff down. Now this will take a bit longer because this is the first time this will have hit the act cache, so it's not got anything cached, it will actually have to download all of this stuff. <coughs> oh you got home quick. Or it's later than I think. <laughs> right then, let's see how this goes. The first bit's worked at, at least, so that's good. So, unpacking some stuff. And... Ooh. What's this? Why is it chosen Pacific Tahiti as as the default time zone. I, I assure you I'm not in Tahiti. <laughs> if, I, if I was, I'd be sipping pina coladas on the beach right now. <laughs> right, okay. Um, uh, let's have a look then. So let's have a look in the machines directory. And there is Fred. And let's have a look at Red Etsy OS release. I think that's the file. That is definitely a Debian system, so that's good. So let's do. We probably need to update the run. We've got a. We actually need to sort of update the run command, don't we? Because uh, run here. 
this makes a whole bunch of assumptions. So run needs a name. So we'll have to join that together. So it needs the name and the command. So actually, this is going to be the same as this, isn't it? <clears throat> you need a container name uh, a contain name. We don't need a command. We only need a command if um, <clears throat> that's optional. So we'll just fake it for the moment. Else, do that. So we're not even checking if. Uh, third parameter is available or not we're just gonna go for it okay that's so we definitely need a name we pass that to container run so container run we now need to go and do some things don't we uh, here it is so we default the command to bin bash the root is not going to be that it's going to be um, machine directory that there we go so that's whether the container exists and then we've already got the necessary thing in here to catch this container does not exist so we drop out and then we say if there is a second parameter to the function then make that our command we don't need to echo it but that's fine <clears throat> and host name yes that's correct because that is the name of the machine, okay. All right, that might work now. So we should be able to um, sudo machine spawn run Fred. I'm in Fred, there we go. So can I app get update? Well, it's not completely busted. <laughs> it may not be perfect, but that is that is a it's a magical place hey danny i got that reference <laughs> i got that reference it is a magical place why did it choose to heat it what what possible reason can there be for it choosing to heat it right okay <laughs> right then that's good that is a and so i should also by the same measure be able to run bob is Bob and if I cat etc OS release this is our Ubuntu container so sudo machine spawn let's bootstrap um, we'll call this one Ubuntu jammy and let's put some jammy on our bread so this should be this is this is cached in the apt so again this transparently talks to apt cacher if it's uh, if it's installed on the host <laughs> hello diogo how you doing <laughs> you like that yeah call our container bread and stick some jammy on it <laughs> uh, so this should be a 2004 container. This is good. This is going okay. So whilst that's standing that up, we can just let that work. So which of these placeholders don't work? We know remove should work. Pull, pull tar, we need to add our wget. Um, uh, what you call it, wget safety harness around it if it's got a broken version of system d 
Um, but we can bootstrap containers. We can run them. So we should check removing a container and we should check cleaning a cache. Make sure all that works. Then we'll go and look at pull tar, get that working. And if we get that working with the fallback, then that would be, a me pardon me, that would be a mechanism to see if we can like stand up a Fedora container. So, <clears throat> I'm just seeing what time zone it picked. No, we no. So we've got bread. Okay. So let's um, run bread, and let's do lsb release minus a, and that is indeed jammy on our bread, and that get update. I don't need the sudo. Can I do this? So run red at get uplink. I don't know if this is, yeah, not quite. I think I need to work on this last bit of the parser. Will that work? Spawning. Exec failed. No such directory. No such directory. What? Okay, well that needs work. So let's have a look at passing parameters. Oh, no, I'm in the terminal here, aren't I? So what were we just doing there? Run, run the R. Ah. Do I need yeah, uh, yeah. This is this this is only going to work for single word commands. Okay. Okay, we will we'll fix that. So let's just check the other bits work very quickly. So we've got machine spawn. Let's do. Was it remove? I don't remember. Remove. I think that was the same keyword that machine control uses. Remove bread. No, Bob. Uh, could not remove image name blank. Okay, so we haven't updated, haven't updated that one. So let's go and remove that container name. Ah. So that's going to be that, and we want one of these, exactly like this. Let's specify a container name, do that, don't keep the semicolons, right, okay, so that should probably work now. So remove Bob, no, nope. oh, well that was disappointing. <laughs> um, Why didn't that work? Because I probably don't actually do anything in the remove function. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so we need one of those. That's it. Because it was that was written when we were using global variables in our spike. So let's try that now. There we go. So Bob's gone. So sudo ls machines and there's no Bob. And Bob was also an Ubuntu focal cache. So let's try and machine spawn, clean cache, and I'm gonna give it a silly name. We're gonna call it uh, Doris, which shouldn't exist. What the heck did you just delete? Not in that directory, but Bootstrap, Deb, Cash, Deb, Boots. Yeah, it's gone completely, hasn't it? That my cache has been completely wiped out. There's a bug there. That's one of those bugs where bad things can happen. So what have we got here? We've got if the Bootstrap 
name exists. Bootstrap directory. Is that the right bootstrap var cache bootstrap? Why did that work? Container clean cache name is the parameter we're passing in. If that directory exists. What? Then remove it. That doesn't make any sense. How, Thank how you for subscribing, did... Diddle Daniel W. <laughs> oh, Danny, thank you. That's very kind of you. Oh, hey, Tommy. How you doing? Sorry, I was, I, I was, I was off. I was off there for a while there. So let's have a little look. What's going on? <laughs> so Tommy's got a question. I think there are some people from Ireland here. Hopefully somebody can be of assistance. Uh, anybody happen to know about Irish employee law with regards to leaving your job within the first 13 weeks? Not me, but there are some people from Ireland here. I Maybe somebody can message you. Twitch pushed. <laughs> Did it show you too many ads? Is that what you, is that what you mean, <laughs> Danny? <clears throat> Oh, the stream died. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the only person that I thought might help you is of no help whatsoever, it turns out. <laughs> Never mind. Um, okay, what, what, what am I missing here? Why did that... Why did this not get caught, right? Let's do this. Echo found exists. Oh, that that'll do. Else does not exist. Yep, we'll have that GitHub Copilot. So we'll we'll no longer do the deleting bit. So now we'll do clean cache Doris does not exist hang on name hang on I'm not passing oh. I put all this in the wrong place Silly boy. There we go. Mystery solved. I'm an idiot. <laughs> right. Two. We don't need those. Right. Okay. So now let's try that again. So if we clean cache Doris, Doris does not exist. Of course, Doris doesn't exist. We knew this. <clears throat> okay. And. Do we make the necessary directories anywhere down here? I think the tooling will make the necessary directories for us, so we don't need to worry about that in the script. Okay, so I feel I need some simple little helper thing, you know, uh, if number of parameters is two or something like that, you know, to to that we got lots of repeated code here and we don't want that. <clears throat> Mind you, we could we could do this. We could do this. This is what we would die. I was starting down this road. We could do clean cache, remove, clean cache and remove. These are basically the same thing. And then here instead of calling that we can call action there, or paste action there so now we've managed to fold that code together and we could just keep shell check happy like so i think so let's do clean cache doris oh 
Okay. So we will need to uh, do churn. How do I do this? Is it something like something like uh, something like that, isn't it? Um, let's look it up. We'll do use bash string replacement. Bash built in string replace. Uh, you can have cookies. Yeah, here we go. Slash slash pattern string. So slash slash pattern string slash slash pattern string. That should do it then. Let's try that again. So clean cache Doris. There we go. So now it's calling the appropriate function. And we we call remove. Doris doesn't exist, but we're calling machine couple directly. So that gives the errors back. There we go. So we've been able to fold a bit of code there. That's all right. Um, container pull. So let's... Um, Let's do this one then. We're going to have to <laughs> cut this or distro release. Yeah, so this, this, this just needs different words at the moment. So we'll just copy and paste this for the moment. So pull tar is going to be that and it's going to be two for the URL and three for the name. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Specify a distro parble URL and container name. So let's think how are we looking here not bad so what we're going to have to do now is work around this big old mess and we did start on that earlier so I think what we'll do is we'll go and steal a wget wrapper from one of the other projects ah uh, Let's grab, what was it called? Um, I've forgotten. My mind's gone completely blank. Um, ABS multiple. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> and I think build uh, OBS build has got a wrapper for w getting it somewhere download a file here we go this does way more than we need but that that's basically what we're looking for <clears throat> so that will probably what else do I do here? Oh yeah, we've got some clever stuff with... We'll just take this whole thing and we'll... Oh, hang on, we've got a download tarball here. This is probably... Yeah. Where's the download bit? Oh, I see, we call download file. Okay. So, download file. We'll just grab that and strip out what we don't need. So let's lob this in up the top here. Uh, we do need a URL. And this could be the name.
like so. We don't care whether or not it came from GitHub on this occasion. We don't need any of that. We don't need to do any of that. So we can now get directly into try and download it. And if it doesn't work, fail downloading. So uh, tarball file, we're pulling out their tarball directory. So we could put this in the bootstrap directory again, couldn't we? Uh, what did we call it? I can't remember. Bootstrap dir. We probably need to make sure that's created. Thank you for the follow, Siminyazar004. Wow, that's uh, quite the username. Uh, hello and welcome. And also, hello, Wojklisku is... Uh, wow, that's also not an easy username, but hello and welcome. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for stopping by. So, uh, let's, let's just make sure that that directory exists. Uh, and we don't care whether it's there or not. We'll just always make sure that the bootstrap directory is being made. That is after we've checked that we're a root user. What's wrong with this? Why are you, why are you complaining? Declare and assign separately. Uh, I'm not going to do that now. You can wait. Okay. So... We're going to use this variable name for that. So what we're doing here is we're saying if wget didn't download the thing, then uh, delete it and bomb out. So download file should now do a thing. So let's go to our pull tar. So now we're going to do what? We're going to do download file um, URL and that's the only thing I need but we'll need a yeah exactly what that was just about to do for me Come on. There you go. Come on then. Why is it? There. Honestly. Um, right, so download that URL. And then do... Uh, there it is. That's exactly what we want to do. Machine control import the tarball from the bootstrap directory from using the URL with string replacement just to grab the file name and call it name. So there's half a chance that might be correct. What do we think? Oh, actually we need a, an actual URL to test this with, which I don't have. So, hey, uh, Regain, is that what we got there? Copilot is great. Um, yeah, we, we, we're all in agreement. We were chatting about Copilot earlier. Uh, generally speaking, I think the positives outweigh the negatives. Um, to Ubuntu Krusty Clown. Oh, are you? Uh, right, okay. Um, let's have a little think here. So, what have I missed? I've missed some chat here. So, so ah, why why says cow? Co? Uh, what do I create here? So, it's all Linux stuff here, basically. Um, so I work on a number of things. 
Um, I'm the lead developer for Ubuntu Mate, which is one of the um, Ubuntu flavors. So that's a bit of desktop development with Mate desktop and distro maintenance and all the rest of it. And then we've got a couple of other sort of side projects. One's called QuickMU, which is a way to really quickly stand up uh, and automatically create um, virtual machines for on Linux for Windows, Mac OS, and all the Linux distributions. So it has two commands, quick get, name of distro or Windows 11 or whatever. That will download everything, create the VM, and then just quick MU the name of the thing and it will run it. This is kind of a spin-off. This is um, a container manager and this is for creating build environments locally, operating those build environments and also then using them in CI CD. So this is just um, sort of an idea that's come to me recently. I'm just sort of fleshing it out. And then I also make um, Raspberry Pi stuff, got a whole load of Raspberry Pi stuff, um, particularly um, uh, Ubuntu Mate images for the Raspberry Pi and a retro gaming operating system for the Raspberry Pi. I also do stuff with OBS, sort of some real tweaking with OBS on Linux, and I maintain a couple of um, OBS Studio distributions, let's say, um, which are sort of compiled with all the plugins and the tools. Um, and then I do a bit of game development, but I haven't done that on, I've only done that on stream once, but I'm going to start doing some game development on stream as well. So all, all dev stuff, all Linux first, um, and a mixture of sort of containers, cloud, desktop development, all sorts. Right then. I wonder if that's going to work. It looks, looks close. So let's try it out let's try and find what well, one it was one of those cloud urls we were we were looking at the other day um let's see if we can find it oh actually i tell you what let's see if github copilot's gonna gonna do it let's do a comment and say um machine couple pull tar um, Fedora. Oops, spelt it wrong. Go on, go on. <laughs> it's trying to be too clever. It's used all of my um, it's used all of my variable <laughs> names. I actually want it to. Uh, I was hoping it might give me an actual URL to download the. Uh, download the thing so let's do um <clears throat> uh, here's all these bugs that we ran into the other day with this which is why we're working around it now look at them all all over the place um Just want some URLs to some cloud images, really. Uh, maybe that's maybe I should do that into cloud images. That will. Here we go. This should this should get us what we need. So let's just go and grab one of these current cloud image root. There we go. Let's try that. Right then. So. Machine spawn, altar, specify a distro and a container name. Okay, this one's going to be called Cloudy. Okay, so the first thing we've got right is, is actually downloading the uh, the image. That's good. Um. So for those of you that missed like stream last week when we started on this and the first part of this stream, the issue we ran into was there's a bug in system D249 where pull tar doesn't work anymore. So what we what we've done is we've created a wrapper and we've pulled out the version of system D that we're running. And if we're running the known broken version of system D, which I am, 
instead of using machine control pull tar directly, we're actually going and W getting the cloud image that we want and then importing that cloud image using machine control. So at the end of this, we should have, yeah, so it's, it seems to be doing the right thing, look. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, operations successfully completed. So if we sudo list machines, there's cloudy. So we should now be able to machine spawn run cloudy and cat snatch s etc os release and it is indeed a jammy release so apt get update failed successfully <laughs> so we've uh we have indeed actually worked around that initial issue we had the other day uh apt get auto remove clean up so we could probably embed some of these in part of the bootstrapping process. So that's good. So I'm very happy with how that's worked out now because I've been able to preserve um, the bootstrapping feature that I want because I can pull in foreign architectures and we can also now pull down tarballs. So let's try and find Fedora Cloud Image. Fedora Alternate Downloads, is this what we need? Image for OpenStack, compressed disk image, cloud-based images, AMIs. I'm not, I'm not as familiar with the Fedora ecosystem, so I know I don't want this because this is for, um, this is for virtual machines. I don't want that. I just want, I don't want a disk image at all. I want a file system. So Fedora machine control pull tar. There must, there, I'm sure we read about, oh yes, in fact it was, it was in the, uh, it was in the, um, it was in the man page, wasn't it? There was an example in the man page. So I think, here we go, was that it? Pull, oh, that was a raw thing. That's, oh, come on. Um, okay, bother. Well, if anyone's got any ideas, I think we've proven it's working. And we stood up a Debian one as well, didn't we? So I wonder if we could do, we could add a couple of other Debian ones in here to, oh, so this should work now, right? Uh, does not exist. Does, does not exist. Thing to do. Right, there we go. So hopefully our clean cache cleaner works and the run needs straightening out a bit. I want the bootstrap, bootstrap, bootstrap. Here we go. So we could add a couple more Debian distros to this, couldn't we? We could also do... So what came before Focal? It was Bionic, right? And before Bionic, it was Xenium. So, Bullseye, we could... Let's go and look up our Debian releases again. <clears throat> uh, let's have a little look uh, over here. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Proton Beans. I, I just want to try and get them in order because I can't remember. <laughs> I, uh, the Debian code names are not as present in my mind. Debian code names. Here we go. 
So how far are we going to go back? We'll do bullseye buster stretch. That's probably as far as we need to go, isn't it? Bullseye buster stretch. <clears throat> and stretch. See, this is the issue that I have here because my brain can't cope with this. We've got buster bullseye and the next one is going to be bookworm they all begin with b consequently my simple brain can't unpick and decipher those <laughs> right then so we'll give this a test we'll stand up each of those in the bootstrap method so let's come out of cloudy oh i've been editing the script whilst i was running it whoops um, actually, when we enter, we could probably um, walk that, couldn't we? So, um, yes, indeed, there's no, I know there's no, like, progression in the wording. It's just the character names. But choosing three characters with the uh, letter B is kind of um, a bit, a bit mental. Uh, we could go all the way. I, d I don't want to, I don't want to test things that much so we're going to bootstrap Debian stretch right and we could just call it stretch what if I don't give it a name it won't work will it so I think if it I think what I need to do is change that so if we don't give it a name in the bootstrapping process it uses the distro release I think that would be let's go and add that now that. I think that's a sensible, sensible fallback. So, actually, I just want to test this stuff works. I don't think I care about that kind of um, carefulness at the moment. So, stretch. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah, it, uh, sorry, uh, Danny, uh, you're right. Danny uh, has the right solution here, which is um, we need to get that in um, Cop uh, not Copilot, in GitHub CI. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a really good idea. <laughs> I mean, why not? What could we do to actually va validate that not only did it stand the container up, but the container is functional i think we could probably do something very simple like um take um i think i'm i'm think i think i'm like a c application something fairly trivial and compile it run it and get the expected output from it because i think that's kind of what we want to test that you could stand the container up you could stand the container up with the tool chain and the tool chain produced a functioning executable. So I should now be able to run stretch and yeah, should be able to update. Yeah. So we've got the we've got the fundamentals of this down i think so what else do we want to do we want to x out of there we now want to remove stretch there we go nice um and we should also be able to do buster See the other thing, the other reason I like this bootstrap approach is I don't have to know the URLs to things. I can just, I know the names of the things that I want. I think we'll do a little mapping table at some point between like um, stretch and nine. So you can do like Debian dash nine, which is an equivalence to Debian dash buster because the version numbers I think uh, a more meaningful um, inputs than the code names. 
Uh, and after this, we'll just give um, Xenial a go. I mean, we could put them all in. I mean, some of them are EOL, but we could go all the way back, couldn't we? Do all the LTSs. Right. Um, so let's do run Buster. And let's do this one slightly differently with LSB. Oh, LSB release is not in Debian by default. There we go. I didn't know that. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, so that works. And we'll now do bootstrap into... Well, let's go all the way back. Xenial, what's that, 1604? Oh, we need a name. Well, what is Xenial? Well, there we go. Still works. Okay. I'm very happy. Very happy with that little bit of progress, I think. I think uh, this evening, when I'm sipping tea in the evening, I might do two things. I might push that to a Git rep repository because it's actually at a point now where I think I want to make sure I don't screw it up. So I think getting it in source control is a smart idea. And I might do that on a stream. Might do an evening stream and just have a bit of a tinker. Um, so I think the next things to solve are probably a bit more interesting. So I want that run parser to be a bit more... Um, flexible so I can instruct my container to run anything I like. I think that's what I want to do next. Um, and then I think we need to get into the real f the weeds of ooh, copying tree currently at, okay. File is shown is incomplete and is intended as sporadic process. Okay, fair enough. I do remember there's some, there's an alternative to dev bootstrap which I might have to find out about as well. So let's just run Xenial um, and that's definitely it. Does it still work? I don't need sudo. Wow. Okay. I was wondering if we might have to use old archive for some of these. What if we do a dist upgrade? Have we got... Uh... Oh, there's loads of updates. So this is something we're going to need to build in as well. Is actually... Uh, have the bootstrapping process do... I mean, do we want it to do that? I think I do. I think I would want... I would want to know that the container I've just bootstrapped is absolutely up to date. I think I would want that. What do we think? Do we agree? Do we agree with that assessment? We should automatically do the update and upgrade after it's spawned the um, file system. But I'm super happy with this. This has got the definitely, oh crikey, I'm not super happy with that. What was this? Error. It was encountered while processing make dev. Uh oh. Um, let's see what this is going to. Do you want to continue? Yes. Woo. Ooh. Okay. Maybe I. Maybe. I need to do a bit of check-in on compatibility of system D containers and how far back that that actually works reliably because I that feels like a um, binding binding up proc and sys and what have you is not uh, is not completely compatible so we might need to look into that. Uh, would you want it to ask you no so. Personally, so the question was this, so Proton Beamed asks this question. Um, would you want it to ask you if you wanted it to be updated? 
Um, personally, no, because I'm I'm looking. Th this tool is largely for automation, right? It's not intended to be um, manually. Although you can manually drive it, as I'm doing here. The idea is that this is integrated into some build automation locally, or you know, in CI. So I just want it to do the things I ask it to do. So the question is, do we add a flag dash dash update, you know, to the bootstrap, you know, so a fourth option. So it will bootstrap to something or you bootstrap to something and apply the updates. The question I've got in my mind is, why would you create a new container and be satisfied with it not being up to date <laughs> because you don't know what it is like if it's not up to date what is it <laughs> why why is that a good thing so i think i would want to update um but you know i i think about that you know i'm i'm thinking about this mostly from my own needs but you know we we can we could be flexible but i think we've got the right thing here so now we'll do some cache cleaning because actually we need to think about this because the bootstrap oh our cache oh oh so maybe I need to make sure that the cache directory for the bootstrap exists as well because bootstrap directory is being oh it's just called bootstrap okay i'm looking in the wrong place so maybe that cache directory should be called machine spawn seeing as though it's machine spawn that's creating it Oh, I'm in the blooming container as well. Right, okay, let's let's get on the right workstation. <laughs> on the right screen. Bar, cash, bootstrap. There we go. So one of the things we're gonna need to do is think about like where do these pull tiles go? So maybe we rename var cash bootstrap var cash machine spawn. And underneath there have a dev bootstrap directory and also a separate one called altar so we can differentiate which is which uh, rather than just smashing them all together like that right then I'm pretty pretty happy with how that went I think um, that's a great start I'm surprised actually that the, the the thing that's going to get tricky is when I get down here and I want to do things like um, instead of run I want to do enable and disable so that it creates system D units <clears throat> so that you can have them persistent because there are sometimes I want to build stuff in a container and keep it around running um, or put stuff in a container and keep it around running um, <clears throat> so I want to use it for that as well and I'm not sure how I'm going to preserve some of the way the containers are being configured so that will need some thought and then we need to get into bind mounting sockets for audio and video and GPUs and things of that nature so we can run our graphical applications so I think there's plenty to get, plenty still to do. Um, but nevertheless, I'm pretty happy with where that's got to uh, at this point. Right, okay. Um, so we're gonna head over to a channel I have not been to before but I looked at earlier and I think they were doing some free BSD stuff. They were definitely 
messing around with um, ZFS and various other things. So we'll go and take a look. The channel is Last Miles. So uh, thank you all for coming. I may be back this evening for a stream. Um, I will be back Wednesday morning. That will be my last stream for a week and a half because I'm off traveling for a bit. I'm probably going to be doing Machine Spawn tonight and Wednesday. All my other projects will get updated um, before I go away. So if you've got pull requests waiting, uh, I, will, I will get to those in, uh, well, very soon in fact. But for now, thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going raiding uh, and I hope to see you uh, very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>